What's poppin' everyone? Welcome to another episode of Remember When. My name is Jose. With me today are my boys, Amir and Johnny. Say what's up, guys. I am Johnny. Nice to meet y'all. What's good, y'all? What's poppin', boys? Have you guys seen what minimum wage is like right now? Ain't that like 15? Yeah, it's like 15. I, yo, I see 16-year-olds are working at Chick-fil-A for 17 an hour, bro. 17? Better than and they get And they getting free food on top of that. And they getting college scholarships. And they getting paid days off. They getting provided? Chick-fil-A provide them like that? Yeah, yo. Like, Chick-fil-A saying house with us, live with us. They don't even work on Sundays, bro. How crazy is that? You know what I was doing at my first job? You know how much I was making? Pennies. You know what? (laughs) (laughs) Literal pennies. Literal pennies. (laughs) He was working at sweatshop. (laughs) No, so, uh, yeah, my first job was actually at Six Flags Great Adventure. I was a ride tenant operator. I was that guy on the microphone that was at Visual Scan. All clear. All clear means you guys said go high, high in blue sky. Enjoy your ride. Ah! <laughs> and then they'd be off. Yeah, so I, I did that for eight twenty five an hour. Eight twenty five. And gas prices were the same as what they are right now, <laughs> as crazy as that is. So it was like three dollars and like twenty some cents and forty cents when I was working there at eight twenty five an hour. So half my paychecks, I just lost the gas money. <laughs> so it didn't. It didn't. <laughs> How old were you God when you got your you. joint? I was 17 at the time. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. I remember, um, I don't know, maybe it's because like the limitations. I think I got mine at 16. And the only reason is because I we took I took my, our uncle, um, Ramon, and because he had already worked at Wawa, we went to literally all the Wawas in the area and I physically handed in my like <laughs> <laughs> resume. I was like, please give me a job. And finally, the one by uh, <laughs> the farmer's market got me. I was like, hey. And uh, I think I was making seven something. Yeah, because minimum wage was around minimum $7, was like seven twenty five or something yeah, like that at that time. Yeah. I mean, you you really were. I don't know what I was working for. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, seriously, because I, I mean, you put. I, I was like sixteen. I couldn't work full time, so you put in four hours, twenty four bucks. What the fuck? That gonna buy me? <laughs> <laughs> it yeah. sounds like you had an existential moment. It's like, what am I doing here? Bro, I started I hating life. I was like, is this what every adult feels? <laughs> the moment I get in this bitch, I'm like, how much Snickers can I afford? See, and that was your transition into adulthood when you learned <laughs> you know, the, the dollar. How about you, John? What was your first job? First job? I mean, it might sound crazy. I mean, not crazy compared to now, but it was like $10 an hour. I was like, oh, shit. It was like, it was at the time, especially, I was like under the impression, but this was like 2018, so. I don't know if the minimum wage was like up by that by that time, but but I was like, dang, ten dollars is not that bad. It actually could outwork work work out for me. But I ain't gonna lie, the way the the way they dropped treat, treat me wasn't good. I didn't like that shit. <laughs> that ten dollars <laughs> wasn't shit. But you know what's crazy? What I got a I got a raise. I got like a raise in like the the months that I worked there. Got a two cent raise. Two. It was and then I was excited. No, I was fucking pissed, bro. Two percent. I was angry. <laughs> you know what's crazy? So when I was the assistant resident director over at Coastal University, I used to joke with my employees and say, "You get a half penny raise." They actually did that to you, bro. <laughs> that, that's insane. I used to joke about that, and your first job actually did that. They bro, said, "Yo, here I'm, you go." And I remember telling like, well, I was probably telling some people, and they're like, "Oh, two cent raise? That's gonna get you from my two cents. What am I gonna get from two? <laughs> it's like, oh man." You save up some cents, some pennies. That could buy you a house. They said <laughs> you might get one of those individually wrapped uh, double bubble <laughs> gum pieces at it's the like, front counter in the top row. It's like, you know what we can do with them pennies? Turn them shits into like them, uh, the, the, the football the size pennies. coins. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I could do with them shits, bro. bro. If the raise ain't at least a dollar, that shit kind of beat. I'm not going to lie. Hell Especially no. nowadays. You can't, you really can't live off minimum wage of what it was when we first got our jobs to now. Like, the inflation's a bitch, but. Yeah, teenagers yeah. could teenagers could easily if they if they're living with their parents they, well, they and their leave. parents are paying for their shit <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they're playing for their gas money <laughs> i was gonna say because like for me so ba- i'm mean, back when i had my first job there was still such a thing as a dollar menu you know what i mean so like yeah. even though i wasn't bringing home a whole lot of money due to you know gas being the way it was and whatnot 
I was I was still like I still had enough to like get me on my own. Like I was paying for my own gas. I was able to afford that and I was still able to feed myself like on the days that like, you know, I didn't eat at home because obviously, you know, still living with parents and all that. But yeah, so like it, it, even though it was not a lot of money, it still was good for the time. At least good for me, you know, because mm. like I was in a good position in life where that money was just addition, you know, it was just extra savings and all that. Man, I wish we we we, we caught that boomer phase where like all the uh, intro jobs was good enough to buy you a house, get you set up for a little college and yeah. all that. Mm, now, nowadays, I'm be honest. For my first job, even my fam, the fam was like, "Bro, this is experience. Like the money, I know you ain't making shit." Like, <laughs> <laughs> no. So we, I mean, we were all living broke at, I mean. The, the camp that's that's when we were <laughs> we were really struggling uh, that was below that was minimum. no money out that all. was literally below minimum wage <laughs> to be fair we didn't do too too much that was like uh, yeah that, i mean we literally got paid to have fun that was definitely a camp. summer yeah. job quote yeah. unquote but 100%. Keep, but keep in mind we're damn near there for almost 12 hours like maybe tw 10 to 12 hours a day Eventually gets to the point I'm like, I'm making literally like two to four dollars an hour. <laughs> so <laughs> is, is, at this job, Johnny, at one point in time, he was so livid, so mad by it. He said, what am I even here? He's like, I'd rather go donate plasma. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> He was so done with the job. This I had to really take a walk with him and everything. Mind. I was like, Johnny, calm down. <laughs> I lost my damn mind, bro. I was like, this shit is not fucking worth it, bro. <laughs> and what's crazy enough is that I got him to work there a second year. Mm -hmm. bro, that, Only that second year. <laughs> listen, second year. for mm -hmm. anybody watching, like, you know, the experience is good. But, like, if the job ain't getting you what you need and you're not really helping in the job position with your role and all that... Man, just leave, cause like for me, YMCA that was easy money. Like I was oh, like, was. I ain't coming back unless y'all pay me fifty something a day. And I, they they were like, I don't know if we could do that. And I was like, bro, well, you gonna have to because the, I see counselors dealing with kids like on a teacher level, <laughs> and they getting paid twenty a day. It was insane, bro. Was How like was that incredible. split in eight hours? <laughs> that is not work, bro. Bro, I was getting paid fifty <laughs> you get, you, that's to like just tan to and tell people to get out the water. Two to three dollars an hour ain't fucking worth your life. No, bro. it really is not. Even if it's like the most fun thing, it is fun. But they're just realize they're getting fucked in the end. It's not gonna sustain fucking rain. You see the the first the first job experience though. I do have to say that the best thing about it was the perks that came with it, right? Mm -hmm. So for me. I got I got to go into the park whenever I wanted for free, and then I could also go into Hershey Park and Dorney Park for free if I brought like my ID badge with me. Oh, so because they, they had connected. a partner. Yeah, yeah, they had a partnership with them. So mm -hmm. if you brought your your uh, Six Flags Park employee like badge and whatnot, showed that you were an employee there, they would let you in for for free, right? And yeah. then after forty hours of work, which is as we all know, like basically if you're working full time, is just one week worth of work, that's right? The minimum. Yeah, <laughs> like that's literally the the bare bones. That's a training week, you know. But if you get the 40 hours, you got a buddy pass, right? So, I, you know, you could bring one additional friend with you to the park for free. You get a park for free, which you got to think, like, that is some crazy savings, like, for an amusement park. Like, you know, for me to bring another person and a park there and whatnot, that's easily over $100. You know what I mean? So the fact that I could do all that for free was pretty cool. And then you got 35% off, which means uh, a water, you know, water a water normally. bottle. Yeah, a water bottle was a normal normal price tag. Man, if you don't, if you don't put all that value into my hourly, <laughs> uh, fuck all that. Like, respectfully, I, I worked at Six Flags myself. I think I could only go into the main park because I was at the the uh, Hurricane yeah. Harbor. They were like, yeah, you could go into the main park for free. Why the fuck am I coming back here on my day off? <laughs> You know what was one of my favorite stories that you had told me was about a cold chili dog over at that park. Oh bro. my god! I didn't even know bro. that was a thing because, like, I mean, they did have codes and whatnot, but like, I didn't think that they would be so open. About Let me that. put you on game. If you at a water park and you see the guards kind of like looking from side to side and they like hot dog, chili dog, be scary of that water. Hot dog means someone took a dump. Like, a, that's a log that's just Ooh. floating in the water. Cold chili dog, that's a log with the extra ingredients. That's a little diarrhea into that mix. So, I mean, the only way, they ain't scooping the joint out to fix it. They just put more chlorine. So, I mean, listen, all them times where I said, little kid, get your ass out that water. And his little dirty ass mom won't stop him from sipping that water while the cold chili dog's in there. Watch your fucking kids. <laughs> Oh my gosh. So yeah, for those of y'all that don't know, Amir was a lifeguard at Six Flags at the, the water park section. And 
uh, they they actually kind of put the the lifeguards through the ringer, like in in a way, that right? Shit was because traumatic. I don't know if you, I, I mean, I remember seeing this as just a regular park employee, right? But they the mannequins that they used for the babies, especially, yeah. were literally lifelike. I remember the first time I saw it like come out the water, I'm like, oh my gosh, a literal baby drowned. But no, like this this mannequin looked exactly like a real life baby, and yeah. they they used to test the employees all the time because I, they I, had to constantly have their head on a swivel. I forgot it. There's Red Cross that usually does the CPR. So if you've done normal CPR, you know what type of babies Jose is talking about because it's like a little model baby. Um, but it's some other org. I forget what it's exactly called but they'll randomly stop by your boss will be dressed up like a normal person mind you you're working you're you really supposed to be surveying for actual danger <laughs> meanwhile these people are picking up uh in the lazy river putting like little white black babies in like the corners to see if you'll notice in 10 seconds and god forbid if you don't because they record in the whole thing you better <laughs> jump in the water save it appropriately better do cpr right because if not you going back to the drawing board my see, boy I'm, I'm surprised like no one's got like or even like the, the regular participants like riding down lazy river we're like oh my god is that a fucking baby bro <laughs> I, I one time had a lady because you're supposed to react within 10 seconds i remember that was the rule and you have to nod your head like you were saying. Yep. So I'm not just going to break my neck and break my scan. That's what we called it. And some lady found the baby before me and she was screaming. So all you saw was this chick that's in a tube, grab her hand underneath the tube, hold up this baby by the leg <laughs> and be like, oh my God, there's a dead baby. <laughs> and my boss is on the tube just like scrambling to get off. No, ma'am. No, it's fake. It's fake. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm gonna traumatized. Man, I was so happy that lady found the baby before me because I didn't have to do CPR on that bitch. <laughs> Better your trauma than mine. <laughs> I can already see it now. Just the supervisor walks over, just taps you on the shoulder. When <laughs> they do that sometimes, they, they'll just pat you. Hey, my baby's choking. <laughs> And then they'll have another guard to replace your shift. That way you can just go off to the side and do this <laughs> fake scenario. Oh, my gosh. You see, I'm lucky. I didn't have to deal with, like, anything that that crazy. I am I still, like, dealt with, like, some, like, stupidity, right? The one time the ride was down. So every time the ride goes down, right, you had to go on the microphone. Ladies and gentlemen, there's some minor technical difficulties. You never knew if it was actually minor or major, <laughs> but you always had to say minor, right? And then they come up to you as if you're the technician. They'd be like, what do you mean by minor technical difficulties? Bitch, I don't know. <laughs> and then they come up, they'd be like, what do you mean you don't Two know? Two screws came loose. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be like, the button is blinking red. And they're like, what does that mean? Minor technical difficulties. But what does that mean? I have no idea. I just work here. I'm 17. <laughs> I literally hold up that little log that says, you're too short. You're too tall. <laughs> have you ever gotten scared? Like doing that i remember i would be working at six flags and some days i'd be like oh it's a regular day i'm doing what i'm supposed to do and then there's some days where i walk in i'm like bro i really might kill someone today like on accident you know what i mean because like <laughs> if, when you're a right operator it's like okay you just pushing the button and god forbid one day you just get lax and nobody got the the one person don't have their seat adjusted properly and this man fall out superman like halfway so through. you know what's crazy is that we actually did have a lady the one time that i was working there that swore on her life that her her actual like um harness or whatnot came undone Hell as they were going my. downhill though yo yeah, so she was like, so she was like clenching like onto everything for her life. She swore by it, right? Here's the thing: I highly doubt it. I'm not gonna lie because I'm not gonna lie. Her ass would have been flung out of there. Yeah. She would have been dead. I'm not gonna lie. She would have been dead. Well, I don't care how it? much you hold hmm? on. What to ride it. was he? A King to Cobb? It was King to no. Cobb. No. No. Yeah. So <laughs> for those of you that have never been on King to Cobb, right? So I don't know if it still is, but it was uh, at least at the time that I was working there. That was the world's tallest roller coaster, Some right? Must have Some, someone must have yeah. beat it by now. It, it must have. It mm. went, uh, I mean, still goes, but 126 miles per hour. So you're telling me that you didn't, you're asked to not fly out with that harness going downhill 126 miles per hour. I'm sorry, lady. Yeah, no, you, you were just You Hercules yourself into that seat? Yeah, I was like, absolutely not. No, that didn't happen. No, but Six Flags, I, honestly, I never knew what I was getting myself into each day that I went into work. I remember the first week of work. So you had the little radios to talk to each other all around the park or whatnot. Or if you need to talk to another ride and all that, you know, you could, depending on which channel you were on and shit. But in the first week that I was there, so where Kinda Ka is in the operating booth, right? You get to kind of oversee the parking lot and also the ride itself. The ride is in front of you and the, the parking lot is to the left. And I hear on the radio, they're like, hey, there's this dude in the parking lot, like, flipping over trash cans, right? <laughs> I remember this. And, yeah, so, like, 
I look over and I said, there's no way, no shot that there's just a man. And sure enough, there's this man just going Mach 5 to each trash can, just flipping it over. Just goes, uh, <laughs> every trash can he sees, right? So Six Flags security just isn't actual security. It's just a bunch of old fat men, right? That just wear the outfit, right? They're not bouncers. So no, not, not bouncers at all. actual security. They just there so, to call the police. Yeah, they, they tried getting them to like catch the guy. This man was just way too fast. He was just buttered to them, right? He was just like, oh. <laughs> and then flip another trash can just the whole like i'm i kid you not was like tackling the whole thing i'm not gonna lie i neglected to do my job duties as the ride operator <laughs> for a good three minutes because i was like dang this man fast da- oh shoot <laughs> i'm like what's in that trash bananas oh wow that's crazy it, like i i'm the bro the funnel cake? Who the fuck? so they had to they had to call up the actual local police authorities right and i've never seen this before but like they all like dog piled the dude like they all like literally like tackled him and just like laid on top of him and that's how they apprehended this dude but like for a good like 20 minutes this man flipped over every single trash can in the park and when they like explained the story they were like yeah like you know he got kicked out of the park for cutting in line and this man was so salty about it he flipped over every trash can they should have just some, called some lifeguards on break would have caught that man real quick bro <laughs> as soon as the emergency hit i don't care where you at you just hearing a little whistle everybody gotta go yeah i never knew what i was getting myself into after that first week i was like geez this is a job <laughs> i'm like uh no bro like i remember for my shit like i've joined at the worst time possible like literally i've in retrospect i joined at the literally the worst time because company morale already at that point was horrible like i used to work at harbor freight like pretty much it was just you know you get your tools like think about home depot except for you don't get like wooden shit it's not as big but i was a stock i was just like going to back stock you know for the morning Work like night shifts and shit. But I swear to God, right when I get in there, I'm like, okay, me and everybody. I swear to God, every single week, somebody left that damn company. And it would be someone in the day shift or it would be someone in the night shift. Like, I, at first, I'm like, okay, yo, we're losing this girl. Oh, we're losing her? Oh, we're losing her? There's only like three motherfuckers on the night shift. What am I, what am I supposed to do? Literally, instead, they're like, okay. So we losing people. You're gonna have to cut it in on a few on like maybe a couple extra days. I'm like, excuse, I work at school. I, I got school. <laughs> like during the, all this shit, I was working at school. Like they didn't had no respect for my fucking hours. Like what broke the line for me was like they. I had a, I had literally like a final exam for computer science, and that shit I was like studying my ass off, trying to make sure it's all good. And they had me working on the twelve hour shift, the first twelve hour shift I ever saw. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? On the same day where I got a test and shit, I told them like, yo, yo, I can't do this. I can't fucking do this. And they're like, yo, okay. You're still, gonna, you're, you're still have to come in, but I'm like, this gonna be. <laughs> I'm like, okay, but hold up, I'm gonna be, I'm not gonna be able to come in for like six hours, dead ass. And, then, and they're like, okay, so for real, okay, well, they you could do that six hours, and then you'll do another six hours on another day. I'm like, what? Fucking excuse me, how many people we got? And they're like, oh, maybe about like three, but Tom is out, and we can't really. I'm like, man, fuck this job, bro. Like, <laughs> but. Like I said, morale was horrible. And one of my funny, the funniest moments, I swear to God, the, the legend of Craig. Craig was my homie. He was probably the favorite, my favorite dude <laughs> that I had in that job because you know we were. He was an old black man, and I was a young black kid. So you know, we 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 we, we job together. But Craig was enough. Was had enough of this shit, bro. Like he was the he was an old black man, but. He was in the same uh, department as me, so he's trying to big, carry out big ass boxes. Like we got a bunch of tools, like just tools upon tools upon tools. So them boxes were heavy. It's like a motherfucker will break your back if they try to get some shit that was like three stories high. Like you can't get that shit. But Craig was instructed to motherfucking go into the truck because every Thursday we have a truck that will come in and bring in supplies. Craig was told like bring out the the racks and shit, you know, bring out do whatever, do what you're supposed to do. Then Craig overhears someone say. The, the our, our manager i won't dox him but the <laughs> for good reason but like he's he heard the manager call that man call say like hey, you don't have to be a little bitch about it and he said craig was like what are you calling bitch and he said it's such ferocity i'm like oh this is, is this real like is this actually happening bro craig went in on my fucking manager he's like no nah, i'm tired of you you gonna call me a bitch you gonna tell me to get that fucking lawnmower all up on the fucking top of the fucking shelf i'm not getting that shit i'm like craig like i'm about to because at first i'm like oh craig no you're gonna lose your job then i'm like no craig i'm gonna be alone <laughs> don't do this i do have to say that's one thing about first jobs is that like usually when you when you get hired right is that they're so low on staff and all that that you're you're an asset you like you're actually immune like you could mess up so many times i can't tell you how many times six flags literally was like you accumulated over 120 points so six flags had a point system right if you 
like did a no call no show that's supposed to be enough points where like you automatically are supposed to get fired right but they used to schedule me on stuff that i would give them like plenty of notice on being like hey i can't work these days and then they call me they'd be like hey you're scheduled to work today i'm like no i'm not and they're like what do you mean you're not i'm like did you did you lose my paperwork they're like we'll see you on monday and then they'll just end the conversation there and then they'll come up to me they'll be like hey hr wants to talk to you i'm like what is it that, like this time and then they'd be like Hey, uh, you were supposed to work that day, but uh, you've been a really good employee, so we're gonna let you know give you a pass. I'm like, what? Was... That shit is so bull. I they used to do that all the time. Hundreds. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so first jobs, man. Would you now final thought? Would you guys go back to your first job? No, <laughs> no. How about you? Man? I mean, actually, while I was pretty competitive nowadays, it actually is. like it I really joke around a lot bad. because now that. I'm a management level, you know what I mean? As an adult, I'm like, I, okay, I know what beginner pay is. I know what intermediate pay. Well, I was really competitive on the beginning side. Like, you get yourself a gas attendant thing, you're making like 20 to 24 bucks an hour off rip. Bro, I know people that do case management with like literally like psychopathic people <laughs> and they get paid 20. <laughs> That's crazy. That's crazy. But you go back to fucking, you know. Everybody ready? Bam! Like, you would go back to No, work. I've met too many weirdos there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no. I mean, I, I like the perks of it, but I don't think I would ever go back. Six I five. appreciated so the stories it came. 100%. 100%. Otherwise, I I don't really appreciate nothing else. Nah, my job wasn't good for my back or my mental health. No, <laughs> that shit wasn't good. <laughs> yeah, so we'll, we'll be sure to tell y'all some more stories about our previous job experiences in the future. So if you really like this episode, maybe we'll do another one about our second, third, fourth, fifth. We've done a lot of jobs. So <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll dive into our, uh, do a little deep dive into our history. But that wraps up this episode. And remember when? We'll see y'all next time. Peace out, remembers. Peace. Have a Six Flags day.